To make the best pizza dough, you're going to need a pizza stone. Start by removing the racks above the stone for easy access. Remember, the pizza stone needs to go in the lowest tray and be preheated at the same time as the oven. So turn them on to about 450 and give about 30 minutes. We're going to start by proofing the yeast. For our double recipe, we're going to add about 2 cups of water. The water should be hot, but not hot enough that you can't keep your fingers in it for several seconds. It should be about 115 degrees or so. Pizza dough ingredients are pretty simple. Simply flour, water, yeast, salt, and maybe some olive oil. So for our double recipe, we're going to add two packets of active dry yeast to our hot water. Remember, since this is a double recipe, if you're making a single recipe, you can cut everything by half. Now, once we've added the yeast to the water, we're just going to get a little spin with our finger just to get it all mixed in there a little bit. Now you can add either a little bit of sugar or a little bit of flour, just something for the yeast to eat while it's proofing. So we're just going to add about a tablespoon of sugar. Now we're going to let it set for about five minutes after giving it another little mix. Now the yeast should foam in about five minutes or so. It looks something like this. If it doesn't foam, it means your yeast is either dead or old and won't rise. For our recipe, we're going to use a mixer. You don't need to use a mixer, but plan to add 10 more minutes to your time if you're going to knead by hand. Now we're going to add some of the ingredients. We're going to add about a tablespoon of salt and about half the flour. So for a double recipe, that's about three cups or so. Now we'll add our last ingredient, some extra virgin olive oil. Just add a few drops or so, about two tablespoons. Once you've got most of the ingredients, we're going to start mixing. We're going, to add, we're going to use a dough hook instead of a normal beater. Once we have the dough hook in place, we're going to raise up the bowl, and we're going to turn on the speed to about two. We want something slow, just so everything can start getting mixed together. This can take up to five minutes for the dough to actually start to look like dough. We're going to slowly keep adding the rest of the flour, just a little bit at a time. And you can see it start, slowly starts to combine together. Here's the dough once it started to combine into an actual dough form. We're going to add a little bit more flour now, but then we're going to let it set for about 5 minutes just to allow all the moisture to evenly distribute into the flour. Our double recipe here is about the biggest you can actually make in a mixer. So now that we've let it set for a few minutes, we're going to take it out and just give it a quick knead just to see how it's doing. You may need to just to make sure it's even and gets a good rise. If the dough is sticking to the bottom of the bowl, you're still going to add flour about a half cup at a time. Right now we're finished. As you can see, it's clearing the bottom of the bowl and really isn't sticky to the touch. Now that we're done with the mixer, we're going to go ahead and remove the dough hook by peeling the dough away from it and moving it to our butcher block. As you can see, the dough is now no longer sticking to the bottom of the bowl or to your hands. We're going to go ahead and add a little bit of flour to our butcher block, and as you can see, it's still a little bit too sticky. So we're going to go ahead and knead it for about two to three more minutes and really get the dough worked in good. You don't want to overwork the dough, it'll be tough and chewy. Once you're done kneading it, you can check the dough by sticking your thumb into it. It should bounce back and not stick to your thumb. Now we're going to pull back the rest of the dough so it gives a nice clean surface on top. We're going to take some nonstick pan and spray it into the bottom of our mixing bowl. We're going to put the dough in upside down and then move it around just to get the top oiled and flip it over. So now while it rises, this hop can stretch. Now cover with a cloth and let it sit in a warm place for about a half hour or until it doubles in size. When it's doubled, you can push out the extra air and move on to the next step. 
if you cut this step short a little bit, it'll still work, but you still need a good rise to get good dough. We're now going to separate the dough out. A large recipe can divide it into about six equally sized pizzas. So we're going to break these off into six medium little balls. You're going to take the ball and you're going to push, the, push it underneath, keeping a good, nice, clean surface on top. Then you're going to move these aside and cover them in a towel to keep them from drying. We let them set for a few minutes. Letting them set keeps them from getting too stretchy and shrinking when you roll them out. First we're going to flatten the dough here and just add a little bit of flour. You only want to add enough flour just so it's not sticky. If you add too much, it'll become too tough. We're going to keep rolling away from the center, and you want to get the pizza dough fairly thin, because it's going to rise in the oven. Once you get the pizza the size that you'd like, whether it's big or small or however you're doing them, you want to make sure it's just good. You can stretch it a little bit by hand if you don't want to keep rolling it. Some people can toss the dough, go so however you feel comfortable doing it. You can stretch it with your hand, but when you do, be careful that you don't puncture hole. Keep your hand, keep your fingertips turned down and just work with your knuckles so you can slowly stretch but not go through the dough. Once you get good, you can actually toss the dough, which actually helps stretch it a lot. Once your pizza is done, you can get out your ingredients. One option is to get out your ingredients and get them ready while your pizza dough is rising. Today we'll be using several ingredients for our pizza toppings. Olive oil, salt, pepper, garlic, oregano, and basil with a great base. Here we have some roasted peppers and onions. You need your choice of pizza sauce. You can have your choice of cheeses too. We use Italian five cheese. Here we have some grilled chicken strips, and finally some fresh chopped up tomatoes. First you're going to want to slide your pizza dough onto a pizza peel with liberal flour underneath before adding all your toppings. We're going to go ahead and add our base to it first, just evenly spreading that along the pizza. You can use a pastry brush to evenly spread it if a spoon doesn't work for you. You're going to go ahead and add some grilled chicken on top. This is pre-cooked so that when you cook it in the oven, it'll just be heated. We're going to go ahead and add some peppers and onions. Now a few of our fresh cut up tomatoes. Finish it off with a little bit of cheese. You don't want to add too many toppings, or you might want to switch to using a pizza pan and a thicker dough. Now just a little bit of salt, maybe some pepper if you'd like, just to give it some good seasoning. Now we're going to make sure that it doesn't stick to the peel because we want this to slide up easily onto our pizza stone in the oven. Now you're going to place it over top of the stone, and with a series of quick jerks, you're going to slide the pizza onto the stone. Now we're going to cook it 9 to 12 minutes. Both the top and bottom of the pizza should be cooked. We're now going to remove it using a flat, edgeless tray. You can use the pizza peel, but this sticks less. You can also keep it on there to cool while you're using the pizza peel to put the next pizza in the oven.
You want to let it set a few minutes before cutting, but now you can either use a pizza cutter or a knife. We're going to go ahead and use the knife. It works good to cut the pizza into half first before putting it into slices. 